It's the most wonderful time of the year. Things sparkle and everything just seems so much more magical, even our crafts. So let's get some magical crafting started with some ornaments for our Christmas tree. And who am I? Well, I'm none other than Indiana Jones and this is my channel, Crafting with Indiana Jones. So let's get started with some Christmas tree ornaments. This Christmas ornament collaboration is being hosted by Jack Russell Creates and yours truly, so please check out the link for more ideas below. Do I need to tell you how much I love foam clay? Now, do I need to tell you I love it even more when I found they have this beautiful brown color so similar to gingerbread? So I'm going to make some gingerbread ornaments, but not before we have dun 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 attack of the cute little kittens. Oh yes, there's Kuru. He, she had to come and sit right there. Of course, there's nothing like having baking soda all over a kitten's butt. But, you know, she sat there and watched me as I rolled out the dough. It's so funny. The clay, I should say. But look at it. It looks just like gingerbread dough. So fun. So, of course, this is a very simple craft, especially when you don't have to be painting the, the clay itself. It's so easy when it's already that color. So one bag, I'm sure, is going to pull me through the whole entire holiday season and it cuts just like dough. So how wonderful. Oh, and now here comes Luna because you know, one kitten isn't enough <laughs> to be part of my collaboration here. I'm always collaborating now with my kittens, collaborating and you know, trying to get them to get off the counter. And unfortunately, Luna knocked over my camera, broke the light on my camera, but we are okay. There's a, there's the ring light right there. Look at it. So yeah, the, you know, the caution of crafting with kittens and she was going to knock the camera over again because <laughs> once wasn't enough in a video. So here I am just trying to put together the clay and, and oh goodness. Oh, they're so cute though. I can't fight with them. I know I should be training them better, but you know, they're kittens. What can we do? Look at look at this. So now I'm going to use this this um, fabric puffy paint. Fabric puffy paint is the best for this because it's already in a wonderfully convenient bottle. Now let me warn you, I'm not very good. If you're like me and not a cookie maker, I am not very good at like lining the cookies. Oh, Attack of the Kittens again. And um, yeah, my oh goodness gracious. No, wait, wait. There's more. But wait, there's more. So anyway, I continued working with my little clay projects and gingerbreads. However, unfortunately, while the puffy paint was drying, uh, lovely little Luna went on the counter and knocked over all of them. And so I have no end product. So just imagine how cute they looked at the very end with ribbon and stuff like that. So anyway, if they were real cookies, that's how the cookie crumbles, but you get the gist of it. So in my endless stash of items, I found this little box and it looks like a little mini hat box. So I decided that's what I was going to do. Paint it like a little mini hat box. And I thought it would look so cute in this vintagey minty green color. And I, you know, I, I have been really loving this minty green, not only for spring, but for winter as well. Again, because of that vintage retro look. And what I decided to do with this is just create it to look like a little hat box and add a little tree on top. I think it would look so cute. So here I am, I'm adding the green, green stripes, red stripes. Hello. Note to self, don't do your voiceovers at night because you're tired. Okay, Indiana Jones, just don't do it. And for anybody else out there, do it when you're bright and bushy-tailed early in the morning. I'm usually bright and bushy-tailed early in the morning, you know, as best as I can be when I wake up at six in the morning. Anyway, enough about me. Let's get this finished. I put a little red ribbon around it, and then I'm going to plop one of those cute little Dollar Tree. Look at this. I love it with a pink tree. I love pink trees. So cute with a little peppermint. And there you have it. I'm going to add some more embellishments, but I think it's good just as it is. It's a holiday flip. So before I put this cute little thing away, what is it called, little sign? Before I put that away for Halloween, I said, you know, I love the shape of it. Let me use it for Christmas as well. And originally I was gonna use it on that red and white striped paper, but I didn't like the way the white of the, you know, of the uniform 
was like see-through you know these window clings that you get at the Dollar Tree that's what I'm using these window clings so what I decided to do is just paint over the the white area with white paint so it's opaque now instead of using the red and white stripes it's like I got some green you know got some green paints let me just use the green paint again because I wanted it all to be like you know matchy matchy kind of things yeah matchy matchy so here I'm just painting it all I used two um I think I used two doesn't look like I did. Oh, you know why? Because I kind of like striped it with some of that gold color just to make it look vintagey. I wanted it to look vintage. So this is what I'm doing on the edges is like, I'm just dry brushing it so that it has that vintage worn out look. And then I'm going to take a paper towel and just brush it down so it's not so, you know, so stark. So it doesn't look like, oh, I just painted it now. No, this was painted a while back and it just faded out. So that's why I'm, what I'm doing here. Do you understand what I'm saying? I don't know, sometimes, like I said, Annie, don't do voiceovers at night. You're tired, you're a little wacky, but you know, a little wacky goes a long way in my channel. I see it that way anyway. So I hope this is entertaining and I hope I'm not confusing you as I, as I go over and over the edges again. Now, as you can see, there's sticker residue in the middle, but I don't care because I'm just, I'm gonna cover it. So now that the white paint has dried on my little uh, decal here or on my window cling. I'm going to cover it all in Mod Podge and just place it on my little panel. And this is going to serve as a look. I think it looks great. What do you think? I think it looks very vintagey and I think it's perfect, especially if you have a large tree and you need larger ornaments for the bottom of the tree. Here you go, it's easy as pie. Now I'm just adding some cute little embellishments of some holly leaves and berries and a little poinsettia of these. I, I actually got these at Hobby Lobby when they're on sale 60% off this past weekend. So I hope you can create this for your own beautiful Christmas tree. But wait, there's more. I have my extreme glitter from Folk Art and it's, you know, Christmas time, so why not? And it's not gonna get any glitter in my eyes. So I decided to add this beautiful glitter embellishment to all the white areas, the furry white areas of the Santa Claus. I think it'll look so, so cute. And then I was like, ah, let's just glitter everything. Let's just glitter everything. Just do it. So this is what I am accomplishing here. And I think it's gonna look really cute when it's all dry because it just has that little tiny bit of sparkle. It's not too much glitter, but just enough to remind you it's Christmas time. So I hope you try this out for yourselves and save some money by the double usage of a little Halloween sign. Here I'm using one of those mason jars of from Dollar Tree actually. It's one of those salt and pepper shakers from Dollar Tree. Well, this is such an easy, easy, this is an indie quickie. That's right, it's an indie quickie. Let's name it what it is. And all I'm doing is I'm gluing the little holes and putting some of that wax paper into the little holes so that the snow doesn't come out of it. I fill the bottom with some glue and that's it. I'm gonna put one of those little trees that you can get either at the Dollar Tree or at Hobby Lobby. Now just fill the bottom with some of that Dollar Tree fake snow and you are done. And a few more embellishments and it'll be perfect for any Christmas tree. And there's a kitten again. Now I bought these wood slices from Hobby Lobby and they are awesome. I love these wood slices. I also thought it would be cool to get some wood slices once they started cutting down natural trees. You know how they always like shave off a little bit at the bottom? but I know that they're very sappy, so you'd have to leave them out to dry. But just imagine this with the beautiful pine scent. So here all I'm doing is using the same exact colors I've been using all day today in the folk art paints from Plaid. I love to craft forever. I really enjoy my Plaid products. And uh, again, these are folk art paints. And I am using a very simple uh, paint technique, which is basically uh, dab, dab it and dab it, dab it, dab. That's all you do is dab and dab and dab and dab and dab and dab. And just mix the two colors. That's what gives it depth and that's what gives it interest. Um, that's basically it. That's all I'm doing. So this is great to watch a nice Hallmark movie while you're dabbing your paint and painting your little wood, um, your wood slice. And then all I'm going to do is add a beautiful little gingham um, ribbon I'm sorry a gingham black and white gingham ribbon that I received from N beads and there is a link down below as well as a coupon so you can grab some beautiful N beads 
uh, embellishments for your Christmas. If you order now, you'll still get them in time for some Christmas, Christmas crafts. And again, while I was painting, I also added a little bit of snow, a little bit of some red berries here and there, and that is pretty much it. Here's our little wood slice ornament for your cottagecore tree. Now I found these little frames at the Dollar Tree and usually they use these frames for weddings to put place cards and I'm just taking it apart and I'm just going to use it for our craft today. It's black and it's perfect because it's I wanted it to have the black background but they have it in gold and they have it in white. Once again painting it with that beautiful basil color from our basil. No basil is the name of a person but basil <laughs> is the herb that this looks like. And now I'm doing a little bit of whitewash on top of it as well, just to give it again some dimension, some highlighting. And I just, I love the way the color is turning out. It's absolutely perfect for my cottage core look. And now all I'm going to do is embellish this little frame. And it's, it's so simple and easy. Now you can put a picture in the frame if you like. I liked having this like open uh, frame kind of look. It's very, country very cottage core so I thought this was perfect for my little Christmas tree as well and last but not least we're going to add a few pine cones to finish this off perfectly now to tie it in all together with the other decorations that I already made of course we're gonna add some black and white gingham because I, I really do like the black and white gingham it's so cute and again perfect to tie this to your Christmas tree. And there you have it. It also makes a beautiful tag for any kind of gifts. Now for the horses, I took them outside and I took off their manes and their tails and I spray painted them all in a chalky antique white. It's not perfectly white, but an antique white kind of finish. And um, it worked very well on these plastic horses. Now I'm using some moldable air dry clay, and this is the model magic clay. I use the model magic clay because it's a little spongier and it's easier to form even once it's dried. And all I'm doing is making my little saddles for my little horses, as you can see. And uh, I like the idea of making the saddles, but it needed a little embellishment. So using that crockery stamps, yeah, you heard me right crockery stamps from IOD, I stamped the edges of my saddles so they would have a nice little design and it worked perfectly. And again, this is the Crayola Model Magic. It's a little more spongy than their air dry clay, which is perfect because it won't crack and it's very, very pliable even after it dries. Now I'm making some more embellishments for the front of the horsey. This one got stuck. I think I forgot to put in the cornstarch. And um, yeah, this came out really nice. Uh, like I said, this is a moldable clay. I don't know if you call it clay. It's a spongy. I don't know. It's cool. I like it, but you can get it everywhere. And it, it's fun for the kids too. So here I'm just going to form it around the neck of my horse. Stay up horse. Oh my goodness. And there you can see where I'm going to put it's like it's gonna be you'll see it's gonna come out really cute but uh, it's like their reins so there you have it that's how I'm going to add all these embellishments to my little horsies and here you can see all the little saddles that I made for my horsies using my plaid family of products of course I am now painting using all their acrylic paints so I think this is folk art or apple barrel but I love the colors that they have and it's perfect to paint all of my embellishments for my little horsey. Next, I needed to create a new tail and mane, of course. So I'm using this beautiful, colorful twine that I got at the Dollar Tree. And I thought, what a beautiful color combination. It's a very light green and a pinkish red, actually. And so here I am, all I'm doing is gathering up all the twine to make a tail. Yes, I think I started with the tail. And you know, it's so much fun to make these horses. If you have a chance to do this, and if you have a little girl especially, oh my gosh, I think they would go nuts. So I used some wax paper and put down some glue first so it would be easy to glue all of these strands together. Yes, I realize that I am, I'm showing you my horse's butt, but I have to so that I can glue 
its new little tail. Look how cute it looks. I love it with this twine and it's just so cute and perfectly Christmassy. Now I'm going to do the same thing for the mane, of course, smaller. It's not going to be as long as the tail. And here I am just gathering the twine once again. And same process, I had glued it down onto the wax paper and created a easy way to add the mane right to where the initial mane was and it just looks perfect. Next, I'm going to use these rub-on transfers from the Dollar Tree. I thought it was perfect to add some embellishments to my horsey without having to paint them or draw them myself. So all it is is a rub-on transfer, place it and rub it on. And now let's see if I messed it up. Here's the reveal. Wow, look how cool. Cool little horsey, I love it. It's coming out great. After I did the rub-on transfer, I decided to use some gold leaf and add some more embellishments to my saddle. Now using my Sure Bonder glue gun, I just used the tip and I made the perfect size hole for my dowel and the dowels are from the Dollar Tree. It was the perfect way to do it. I didn't crack the horse or damage it in any way. And as I said, made the perfect size for my dowel. And I did it both to the top and to the bottom. Make sure you do this before you put on any other embellishments. And there you have it, my little carousel horse. And of course, I had already made holes for the saddle, so it was very easy to just attach it once my, I guess, carousel pole was on. And there you have it. Once you have the saddle fitting correctly, all I would do is secure it with hot glue or E6000 or Gorilla Glue and continue adding embellishments. Here I added some beautiful metal roses that I received from BB Craft. BB Craft has many wonderful crafting supplies and there you can see how lovely the roses look with my carousel horse. So for this item, I fell in love with these two cute little ornaments. However, I could not find mugs tiny enough to make an ornament. So if you can't find it, you gotta make it. So let's see how I created my own little Christmas mugs. So the trick here is to use some foam clay. That's right, you heard me, foam clay. I have fallen in love with foam clay. I know there's air dry clay, but this is so much lighter and so much easier to work for. Work for? No, work with. Anyway, I'll work for foam clay, yes. So what I'm doing is I'm using one of these little plastic shot glasses as the inner part of my mug that I'm creating. It's a little mini mug. And all you have to do is shape your clay or your foam clay and uh, place the little plastic shot glass inside. That'll keep its form and shape and it's so much easier than trying to build it all on your own. The thing I love about foam clay other than air dry clay is it's not as lumpy. It really dries very nice and smooth. I smoothed out the sides by rolling it on this wax paper and I made sure that one side was a little thicker than the others because this is where I'm going to create my little face. And all I did to get my little face started was I got two little balls, that's right, two little foam balls, and those are going to be my little character's cheeks. I decided to make a snowman simply because I thought it would be easier because it's already white. It's This foam clay is really super white and you'll see how bright it is that it is very really hard to catch capture the details on camera because it's so bright white. So here I am adding the cheeks to either side of my little snowman's face and it looks weird now but you'll see when it all gets blended in it turns out great. I hope you noticed that during this Christmas season, I made it a point to not speed up the process while I'm making all of these items, simply because I think we're all rushed enough during the season, and I want you to enjoy this process as much as I enjoy making all of these items, because I really do have fun, and I do have a full-time job, and it's hard to find the time, but when I do sit down to start crafting and creating, I really enjoy it so much, and especially when I can make something whimsical and fun, like my own little mini mug. I wish I could actually make a big mug. 
that I can use and, and with this face. Now you'll notice that I already added a little nose and I made the indentations for the eyes. There I was trying to adjust the lighting so you can see the details. So I made the nose and I shaped the eyes as you saw me doing before with my little tool. And now I'm going to add the little eyeballs. And it's very simple again, just creating two little balls and I'm going to add it to the face. And see, I, here I'm just using my little sculpting tool also to make sure I've sculpted out the nose and the cheeks and the little smile that the little snowman's going to have. And also just to make sure that the eyes are real set in. Next, I did add a bit of a kind of handle and all I did was create a little snake, little clay snake like you used to do with Play-Doh when you were little and created a little handle so you can tell that this is like a little mini mug. Next, I'm giving my little snowman some rosy cheeks. Of course, he's gonna have little rosy cheeks and a little rosy nose. And then I'm going to add all the details for his face, including his eyes. And there's a little close up there, but now I'm going to add some details so you can see his eyes and of course his mouth painted black. And I'm also going to add a little ridge at the end and it's going to be like the top hat. Now here I'm taking one of those bottle brush trees from the Dollar Tree and I'm just going to add some beads so that it matches the initial project. And all I'm using are these Dollar Tree beads, believe it or not. They had the perfect size beads for this project. You can use little mini Christmas balls if you can find them. I believe they have them at Hobby Lobby, but if you want to save some money, just use your Dollar Tree wood beads or take some wood beads that you have at home and just paint them in the uh, basic colors of you know green, red, and white or whatever color you want to have. I wanted to keep within the vintage style because bottle brush trees are so vintage -y. And there you have it. Here's the final you know, bottle brush tree with all, I also added some pearls and stuff just to have a little bit of a pearlized look so they look a little more glass. And pretty much that's all you need. Now, you'll have to wait till the very end for the final reveal. I know, I'm terrible, but yeah, just so that you can see all of the other projects. Thank you again to Jack Russell Creates for inviting me to co-host this wonderful collaboration. And please check out a full playlist of ornament ideas down below. Thank you once again for stopping by and visiting my channel. And if you're new, I really hope that you come back for more. If you like what you see, well, please take a moment and subscribe so that you are part of the Christmas magic this year. As I always say, stay safe, be kind, God bless each and every one of you, and remember to live the adventure. I'll see you again soon.